let's get started. So my name is Jeff Horrell. I'm a product work in product incubation in the innovation department at Thomson Reuters. What is product incubation? Essentially, what we try to do in, in our team is we try to take entrepreneurial ideas and kind of drag our large, multi-billion dollar, massive company kicking and screaming into the kind of startup era, right? So we're trying to build and create new and exciting things, um, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So if you're going to do that, you really have to start with the customer problem. So we go out and we talk to our customers. And in the financial services uh, market, we do these amazing roundtables. So like I say, we got to listen to our, listen to our customers. They're going to talk about the knowledge graph and then, and then Neil. We went out to our customers. We went out to chief technology officers at the largest financial institutions in the world. We sit around the table. We had a round table with them. And we just said, look, anonymously, just put into your little keypad, what is the biggest problem that you're facing right now? OK? Can anybody spot the biggest problem? Yeah? Data, silos. They cannot identify or connect their data. Some of our clients have between 20,000 and 100,000 different data silos in their organization. It's astonishing complexity. So if I'm a CTO, part of my problem is I have to try to work out what on earth do I do, right? And you heard from EY, data lakes, mm, maybe not the answer. Might be, might not be. What does a CTO want? They want something that's flexible because they know that technology is going to change. They want something that's open. They don't want to be locked in. They, want, they know they need to move to the cloud, and they, but at the same time, they have to connect to legacy systems. How can they do that? Very, very hard problem, right? And of course, they just, that's all they need, right? That's all. The challenge is if I try and solve their problem, right? If you look to the back of the slide here, it doesn't say anything about customer usability. It doesn't say anything about making the actual users at their firms happy. It doesn't not mention here at all, right? So we said, you know what? Let's go and talk to the users. Let's find out what their problems are. So we talked to financial analysts. What ruins your day? Yeah? What ruins your day? Apart from New York traffic, New York weather, those kinds of things. Um, they spend about 35% of their time just assembling information. Okay? Very reliable, very accurate data. It's a complete lie. There's no way it's at 35%. They just stop when it's taken up a third of their day because they have other stuff to do. There's no way they can possibly assemble all of the information that is out there and make sense of it. There's a great interesting stat for you. Every goes on their social media, you know, you use your finger like this, right? Strolling through your Twitter feeds. Do you know what? The average person, they scroll the distance of the height of Big Ben every day. That's your finger workout. Or I should say the Statue of Liberty, right? Analysts said to us, you know, I used to maybe try to cover and, and analyze 40 companies and get investment ideas on those. But now I have to do 150, and I really am using the same stuff I had before, right? So information overload, trying to understand the connected world we live in to give a recommendations. Very, very difficult. Very difficult. How do you track events? You know, just doing keyword search across text isn't really going to do it. I used to have a pile of papers. We've digitized it. Now I have a pile of papers in my email inbox. It hasn't really solved the problem. So we thought, how do we solve both of these problems? This is what the investment analyst said. You know, I want something that just tells me what I need to know. I don't want to have to search for it. Just tell me. Understand my problem. Tell me what I need to know. So how do we solve both of these problems, the CTO problem and the analyst problem? So our solution is a knowledge graph. No surprise there, we're wearing knowledge graphs. You knew that was coming, right? A knowledge graph for the enterprise and a user-centric analytic sitting on top of that knowledge graph. On, on the bottom of it all is content, right? It's amazing how many big data strategies, the data part is the kind of secondary thing. It's all about the technology. It's all about the data, right? Thomson Oilers is a data company. It's what we've been doing. We've been doing it for over 150 years. We understand data. Okay? 
We know how to build a knowledge graph. We built, we launched the knowledge graph yesterday. It was in the press. Hope you, you saw something about it. The second thing is you have to merge that data together. You have to try to combine your data, not just throw it somewhere and hope that somebody else will do it. You have to carefully work on how do I link and stitch and join the bits of data that really help me understand the world. And the third thing is I have to think of that poor financial analyst. How do I deliver him something that's genuinely useful in analytics and not some report that somewhere is, 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 is going to work? So the analytics. So our solution is these three things, and that's what we've been working on, and, and we're going to talk a bit uh, about now. So let me start with the knowledge graph. So not all of you might, you may not be familiar with Thomson Reuters. Um, we have 50,000 employees worldwide. We've all been in 100 countries for 100 years. We basically just gather data, right? Every single day we have, we gathering and databasing millions of bits of information, very highly structured, highly normalized. Content analysts, human expertise, huge partner network of data we bring in. And also we understand text, unstructured data. We've been mining and using NLP for over 15 years on uh, news and un unstructured text. It makes me laugh because we're like, oh, wow, AI, machine learning, NLP, it's brand new. We've been doing it for a long, long time. And when we do that, we pull all of that content and we link it to core entities, people, locations, events, instruments, a very well-described taxonomy of how does the financial world work. That's our knowledge graph. That's our knowledge graph. We deliver that knowledge graph as a big feed, right? So you can take that data, you can put it in your own enterprise applications. And inside that knowledge graph is a unique identifier. Identifies every single object, not just people, companies. Every single piece of metadata has a unique, unchanging identifier. This allows you to connect and join the data together. And that NLP system I talked about that we've been building for 15 years, we're giving that to our customers as well. So they can use the same toolkit that we use. So that's what it looks like. Again, no surprise, it's on the t-shirt. So this is just the beginning, right? The beginning of some of the basic things that you might want to have connected together. The kind of strategic relationships around a company that might help you understand what it's doing. Yeah? The management says X, but what are they actually, what's the company actually doing? You can understand that from, from our graph. Well, so what's in it? Okay, some numbers are in it. Six million organizations, three million officers and directors, that goes back to the mid-80s. Every single public company officer and director, their entire work history on all the companies they've worked for. It's a pretty big, pretty big graph of, of, of who's who, right? Every equity instrument, quote, listed on any, any market anywhere in the world, very highly normalized and described. This is just the beginning. 75 million metadata objects, so countries, regions, cities, all of the things that you need to add meaning and context to your data, that's in our knowledge graph. Yeah, Very well described, very well represented. Right? And then around about 200 million um, strategic relationships. Who are my competitors? Who are my suppliers? Who, are, who has a joint venture to build this new thing? Who is an alliance? Which industry am I in? What is the family tree of this organization? That's the data we deliver every day to our, um, our uh, professional customers. And now it's in a knowledge graph um, for, for our customers to, to use directly. So it's about, in our current knowledge graph, about 2 billion RDF triples we deliver in RDF. Um, and when we put it into a property graph, we have around about 130 billion paths. Okay, so it's pretty big. You can do a lot with it. So that was the knowledge graph. That's our core asset that we're, that we're delivering, we launched yesterday. But that's just the beginning, really, right? You have to have that foundation, but then you need to, something to deliver it. So we extract that knowledge graph from our internal uh, graph storage system, and we deliver it, and we deliver the sort of extraction, right? We extract meaning from news as well, right? That's the extract step. The transform step. This is really important because you have to think about how do you, what are, the, what are the property graph nodes you want to create? 
What are the relationships you want to create? What, how do you want to model the data around those relationships? So you have to think very carefully about how you model that data. So it's not too fragile, but it also has meaning. And within our data fusion platform, you can kind of connect and join these diff this different data sets uh, together. And then final step is just stitching and joining and linking the data together, right? So we, lo we, we join the data together, and we make sure that every organization in the underlying data sets that the client has are, matches with the data that, that's coming from Thomson Reuters. Unless those connections are precise, you just end up with lots and lots and lots of false matches, duplicates, 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 right? Um, so that matching and stitching is absolutely crucial, and that's really the, what our data fusion product does. Um, so it's gonna go really quickly through so data fusion is kind of a data management layer that sits on top of, of our knowledge graph. And within that, you have, um, you can select what entity types. So is it organizations, is it people? You can set those up and then those are the things you're gonna join the rest of your data to. In this case, I have six different data sources linking into organizations. I have three data sources linking into my, my, my people entity type. And then I have all my individual data sources streaming in. Again, these are all streaming in in real time. And you can, they're being indexed and joined against those core entities. In this case, I have some people data, and I've got their academic qualifications, officer information, person information. And within our, our data management platform, you can decide which, which pieces am I gonna stitch into those core property graph nodes? Which pieces am I going to have as attributes on those nodes or the edges, or you can just leave them unstitched, right? And so it's a flexible admin tool for you to allow you to that flexibility that our customers are asking for in terms of how they manage their data. You get to get the data out of Data Fusion, there's an API, and um, we also have um, an ex explorer view where you can just kind of explore and see the, see the information inside that. That's something that you've probably seen if you come over to our, our booth, we can kind of show you this, right? Um, so it's, it's a kind of window into that data management platform that's, that, we, that we've created. And so we have customers using that API, using the Explore tool, but it's not really delivering analytics, right? It's really focused on that core thing of ETL, right? Joining and linking and, and, and merging that data together. It's absolutely critical for what comes next. And what comes next is that added value on top, which our poor financial analyst wants, right, which is some analytics. So for graph analytics, we have a sort of interesting story. So take one, we said, you know what, why don't we just put the analytics in with the rest of the data? Let's put it in that ETL layer, right? Bad idea, right, bad idea. Did not work. So then we said, well, let's do a project. Let's work with in-memory graph systems. They're really fast. You know, we, we know we need some kind of quick performance. But it's static. You're taking a static snapshot into that in-memory graph. We use Network X. And we, we have data that's continually moving, right? Continually updating. So it didn't really just feel right to do that. We then we picked another graph database. I won't say too much more about that. I can t I'll talk to you that later. Didn't work out too well. You might ask us why did it take us so long to find new O4J, right? But we found it in the end, right? So it was kind of fourth time lucky. And you know, why did we pick new? And again, there are three reasons, right? I mean, the community is amazing. This community is absolutely astonishing, right? I was, we were talking to Emil yesterday about the number of events, the number of developers, the number, the adoption amongst our customer base is, is huge. So the community is fantastic. The support is amazing. Um, and I don't know if, if David is here or the other engineers who've been helping us, but you know, as soon as we signed up, we had a Slack channel with our developers, they were solving problems with us within hours of us signing an agreement, right? We, didn't have, we, you know, we would have got that support anyway, but enterprise customers get fantastic support from Neo. And it really is, it, it, it's really worth emphasizing how good that support is. And fundamentally, it works, right? It's really fast, it's really performant, um, it does what we need it to do. So what do we actually do with Neo, right? Let me, let me talk about that for a minute. 
So we, we put it in our um, Amazon Web Services environment. Um, you know, we use, we use the Bolt protocol and, and you know, we're, we're doing, it's amazing, the, the, the statements in Cypher are so concise, right? It's almost like, oh, it's only a few statements, right? But it's very, very powerful. And what we're doing is we're pulling that data from that data fusion layer I talked about. We're pulling in a huge volume of news that's been tagged. We're pulling in a huge volume of additional uh, relationships. And we're loading that, again, very, very quickly. And we're matching and linking that in into our Neo instance. We're then running a whole range of shortest path calculations. And we have some customer uh, preference filtering results. Let me just take a step back and explain what we're trying to do here. As I said before, a financial analyst, they spend all day you know, a stream of news coming at them, right? And even if they just put in their portfolio and looked at that portfolio, it's very difficult for them to keep on top of just those names, right? But they know that beneath that portfolio is all of the customers, the suppliers, the joint ventures, all the alliances, the family trees, they're missing that information. So how can we surface that information to them, but without giving them, without giving them complete information overload? So that's the analytics that we're using NeoForce, right? So we're tagging the news. How relevant is that news to that person? What's our confidence score of that, of that news article? And then we're looking at the subgraph from our, from our knowledge graph, our whole knowledge graph, how it connects into every news story that is hitting the wire. And then the, our end user is deciding and scoring the types and categories of relationships um, that go into that. So that's what we're doing, and that's, that's what we, we, we use Neo for. So a typical snapshot, you know, a few thousand news articles in a week. We, we're picking out, okay, if the company mentioned that news article, is it relevant, right? So we have, to, we have an algorithm that detects that. Then there are hundreds of thousands of companies just two steps away, and even more that are two steps away through those uh, strategic relationships. Typical portfolio is around 200 companies. So you go in 200 companies, two steps away, all relationships, all scored, linked to streaming news with the whole graph coming out of that, those news articles. So we're running around 800,000 shortest path calculations simultaneously at any one time, and we have multiple users coming into that product. Each individual calculation is about 10 seconds. We're still working on how we make the whole thing a lot faster. But let me tell you, it's a lot, a lot faster than it was when we tried those other three things on, on our list earlier. So what I want to do now is just do like a quick demo and show you what, the, what this looks like, OK? Um, that's the static thing. Let me show you the live demo. Just take me one second to switch. There goes Tim with the, the ball. Did you get someone? OK. <laughs> OK, hopefully my VPN is in. Oh, I threw a ball in 10 milliseconds? That would be, a, that would be interesting. Right? So this is, this is our prototype. We've been using this with, with some customers to kind of get their feedback and, and, and validate it, as I said. So you know, we've got the knowledge graph, we've got our ETL layer, and then we have the application that sits on top. And use it using Neo. So in this case, I've created a portfolio of aerospace companies. So here's my, 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 my aerospace companies. Um, I could give them individual weights in my portfolio if I, if I, if I chose, and I could score on that basis. Um, and then when I go to my news feed, okay, it's automatically identified the three top stories I need to read. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty neat. If I went to, um, yeah, and then, because we're using a knowledge graph underneath, I can explain why. It's not a black box. Yeah? There's a lot of other systems out there that try to identify significance for, the, for news, but it's a bit of a black box. In this situation, I can say here, OK, there's an airline collapsed. Let me look at uh, on, you know, why that happened, natural language, just text generation to explain why, uh, why we've selected this article as important the news uh, from, from uh, the actual text of the article. And then pulling again, pulling out of Neo, here is the relationships, here's the paths, right? Um, Monarch Airlines, which is a 
pretty big kind of charter airline company in the UK, filed for bankruptcy. And what I can see is, hey, I've got Airbus and Boeing in my portfolio, so they were both supplying that company. Yeah. If I just had a new search looking for Boeing or, or Airbus, I would not have found the story. Right? It's only because of the, the knowledge graph connections that, it, that get surfaced. And then what's more interesting is, well, hey, what about the second order impact? Maybe now I'm going to spend some time and research how many planes were on order at Monarch. What's the cancellation going to be? Is there now going to be some impact into their suppliers? You know, maybe BAE Systems was on the hook to deliver you know, some components there. So I can, deal, I can spend my time digging into where a financial analyst adds, adds value rather than just finding and, and searching and, and filtering things. So I'll give another example here. Uh, I gotta pick this one. What is this one? Okay. Oh, this is Avio. Everyone knows Avio SPA, right? Anyone heard of that company? Oh, you? Oh, wow. Okay. Never heard of it, right? I would never have set this up in my portfolio to look for it. But actually, it's a really neat company. It makes aircraft components. It's Italian. It makes aircraft components, and it makes them for these, these companies, right? So actually, the fact that it's just got some new financing, that's pretty interesting. I can then dig into that story. And I would not have found that. I would not have picked that story out. But because the graph has found that, that story and, 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 and target with relevance. Now, what I could do is change the scores here. So I could go in and go, OK, well, that's, this is OK. But maybe I, I care you know, more about different relationships. Maybe I care more about supply relationships. Maybe I care less about ownership. And the user can filter those things very, very simply, very easily, right? They don't have to write a SQL statement or create a brand new report. They can just move these things. And the weighted path, um, you know, shortest path algorithm will then go off and, and recompute those things. I can also pick um, events. So we have, like, if, if I'm interested in particular topics. So maybe I only want to see news on a particular topic. Our NLP extracts those topics and then you know, scores those things as well. I'm just going to pick my other portfolio here. So in this portfolio, I have a bigger portfolio. I've got you know, sort of automobile sector here. Um, yeah, there's some interesting stories about BMW right, and fraud and stuff recently. So I thought I'd, I'd, I'd have a look at this one. And um, OK, straight away, I see FCA US. OK, what is that? OK, well, it, there's a recall. The, the, the news article, the story about the recall was actually about the US subsidiary, I hold the European stock in my portfolio, Fiat Chrysler, right, which is the, 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 the European version. But because I have an ownership relationship in the graph, it's pulled that story up to me, right, and, and it's analyzed it and brought it in. And so in this case, you know recalls are incredibly expensive. You'd, that was certainly a high alert. You'd want to be alerted to that, that kind of article. I have this one here that I, when I saw this, I was like, oh, I can't use this example because I just found something that's really not relevant. Because Siemens, I know Osram, they make light bulbs, right? Everyone knows they make light bulbs, right? Um, no, actually, because our supply chain data set, the knowledge graph, I know actually Osram actually are one of the largest uh, suppliers of lighting systems for automobiles. So actually, the fact that there's a major transaction taking place here. Again, it's relevant for me if I'm looking at the second order impact into my, my sector holdings here. So this is really um, a prototype for us. It's something we're using with our customers to kind of show them the power of the knowledge graph, the power of graph analytics that you can do. There's a lot more you can do here. There's a lot more things you can bring into it. But you know, we just see this huge potential for combining the real-time streaming of an up, uh, updated knowledge graph, stitching it and linking it uh, in a really structured way, and then using Neo as that kind of analytics platform to build user applications. And you can see here, often when we talk about graphs, and we have a nice graph on, on our chest, we think, oh, the user wants to see this graph and explore it. Often they don't. They don't even need to know there's a graph there at all. They actually just want the answer, right? They want the graph, they want the calculations to give them, to help them save time, to give them insight. 
what's nice about the graph is when you do get that insight, you're able to go back and see you know, why, that's, you know, why that's taking place. OK, I'm going to stop there. The demo worked for all my colleagues who doubted. Um, so thanks very much. And, and uh, yeah, thanks for your time. I'm happy to take any, any questions, if there are any questions. Yeah? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Michael. What's next? <laughs> so, I mean, we plan to add a lot more content to the knowledge graph. I mean, that's just like our, our the beginning salvo, really. So probably we'll focus, we focus on strategic relationships. Probably next, more on ownership. Also on uh, transactions, so M&A transactions, changes of ownership. So probably look out for more announcements in, in, in Q1 around that. Yeah. Anyone have any questions? Oh. So the question was, how do you balance out whether a company or portfolio is more important based on that weighting, or if there's a major event, what happens? Um, that's one of the most difficult things to do, actually. So what, what we've looked at is doing and saying, OK, ha have the user set up their own profile. So when you, when you come in and configure your profile, it asks you a bunch of questions. So I'll come to you uh, here. So when you come in, it says, hey, do you want to just use the default setting? in which case we'll pick those things. Or if you want to go in and, and choose your focus, you can set things up. So you might say, uh, let me get to the right point here. So in this case, you might say, if there's a major news event around you know, a legal issue or an M&A transaction, that you would give that a higher score, and that would kind of override the other scoring. It is something that's quite hard, because you can say, well, I think everything's important, right? So it's, it's a real challenge. So it's that, that right balance of customization versus um, kind of setting up profiles to go, I've got a risk profile, I've got a monitoring profile. Um, so the, based on our user feedback, I think that's probably where, where the final application will, will land. OK. So the question is, could, could, how fast is it to upload a portfolio? So this is still really more of a, uh, a prototype. So you can add the portfolio in here. But again, the scoring that's happening is happening in real time. So if you pull in a list, so we'll, we'll probably embed this in our icon pro desktop product. And then if you have a, a, a watch list or a portfolio, we'll just better sync it with this. But we're doing the actual the scoring of the entire graph and all the news against that portfolio. We're doing that in, in real time. So or it might take 10, 15 seconds when you change a portfolio. Um, I didn't do it in the demo. A bit of time, but yeah, so you, you, you can certainly do that. It doesn't, doesn't do it right now, but we could. The lights here. So, any more questions? We'll be down the front here. Did you throw all the balls out? Okay, keep going. Oh, simple. Okay. Oh, if you want balls. Any other questions? No, you just want balls. Okay. All right, here's a question. I can't hear you at all. <laughs> Just come down the front and we'll ask a question there. Well, that's a great question. So that's a great question. I'm sure that's why Dan had his hand up as well. So, the question is, will this kind of, can we make this kind of data more generally accessible for the, you know, the consumer or, or, or other, other use cases? So we actually have a, an open website, which I'll show. Okay, I'll show, can't show it. So permid.org, you can go on there and actually all of our, our basic organization data, basic officers data, and all of the permanent identifiers for all of that content is available there under a, a Creative Commons open license. And a free to air, um, again, you, uh, version of our NLP tagging tool is also on that same site. So you can start to get, you know, working with that data, you know, in, in more general terms. But for now, we're focused the full knowledge graph on the kind of largest financial institutions as our main target. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>